The galaxy is likely teeming with life, even sapient life. Ever wonder why nobody drops by? Giel Tan scurried happily along one of the footpaths of the Grand Garden, his favorite place in all of creation. He paused to admire a ruglax, a lush blue-green shrub. His antennae twitching excitedly, he quickly glanced about and took a sneaky little nibble, trilling happily as the complex, heady flavors washed over his palate. Once again, he marveled at the fact that he could safely digest and thoroughly enjoy a plant from a planet thousands of light years from his humble little world. Only a few decades ago, most of the scientists, futurists, and science fiction authors back home firmly stated that such a thing was laughably improbable. But here, he was doing just that. Then again, those same people said they would likely never contact a sapient race from another star— and now he was here, at the very heart of a grand association of thousands of sapient species from all across the galaxy, and it was all thanks to this. He reached back with one of his antennae and stroked the small device attached to the back of his little kittenous head. It was the single greatest achievement of all time, greater than even FTL, the Universal Translator. With it, all beings, regardless of biology, could freely exchange not only words, but thought itself. Somehow it detected his brain waves and transmitted them directly to other translators in range, sci-fi telepathy. It was, in a word, magic. While his kind could understand nearly everything else, its workings were a mystery beyond their current grasp of science. Then again, a hundred years ago, they were proud of the fact that they had harnessed electricity. Shortly thereafter, they used it to transmit messages along electric cables over incredible distances, hundreds of kilometers. Little did they know that once they did that, they started leaking electromagnetic waves, the requirement the galaxy had set for first contact. Those puny static-filled messages reached a little probe no bigger than he was, which had been placed in their system a hundred thousand years earlier while his race was still building nests in trees. They called out, and the galaxy answered. Again, their futurists and sci-fi authors were wrong. What came wasn't the steel-shod talons of conquest, but a warm, fuzzy, loving hug. They couldn't really be blamed, though. They had been warped by the unforgiving yoke of scarcity, something transcended by the galaxy long ago. Resources of all kinds abounded in space. There was far more than could ever be used, and fusion technology provided each being their own personal sun, providing clean, limitless energy for all. Anything that the galaxy could take from his people could be had for free. There were adjustments that their culture had to weather, but with the kind wisdom and guidance of the galactic community, they weathered them, and now were taking their first tentative skitters into the galaxy as a whole. He preened his antennae proudly. His was the first generation that was hatched fully integrated into this amazing new future of prosperity and wisdom. They might have been backward, but they were far from stupid. They learned the new tech and the new sciences as well as any. And now his was the first generation to have the honor of fully joining the community to contribute to their wonderful future, to start to repay all of the kindness they were shown. Heeding the urging of his parents, he had devoted his being, his very soul, to this. It paid off. He was the newest member of the Galactic Induction Committee, the very organization that had given his little people everything. And now he was going to be the one who would give yet another race, shrouded in ignorance and scarcity, the same wonderful gift that his people received. It was almost time for the meeting. Taking another nibble, he rushed giddily to the grand chamber where his fellows had assembled at his behest. He couldn't wait. It was going to be wonderful. Kivan sent Giltan a warm, loving greeting as he approached. Greetings, junior associate, he transmitted, bathing Giltan with warmth and good humor. Senior, Giltan sent back with a happy chitter. Good morning. I congratulate you on your discovery. Kivan transmitted. Imagine an overlooked species. How remarkable. Oh, how I envy you to make such a discovery. I wish I could take full credit, Giltan replied with a humility that took just a little effort. Kivan spread the eyes in his gelatinous anterior segment in a smile. Despite Giltan's best efforts, his undisciplined mind couldn't help but leak the tremendous pride that he truly felt. Such pride was a little impolite 
but entirely justified. A lost race was a truly amazing find indeed. It may be a little improper, Kivan sent, but indulge your beloved mentor with a spoiler ahead of the others. Tell me more of these beings and their world. Oh, beloved mentor, I would be so very happy to do so, Giltan sent with excitement. They reside in the X-32 system on their third... Oh, dear, Kaivan sent, interrupting him with a little alarm. Giltan, you are aware of what the X in their system's designation means? Um, Giltan replied with an embarrassed twitch of his antennae. It means prescribed. That system has been designated off-limits. But, Mentor, there is a Class VI civilization on that world well beyond the requirements of first contact. And they have been left alone for a reason, child. I am sorry, but I am canceling the meeting on your behalf. Senior, those poor people need our help. They, those poor people are beyond our help, Giltan. They, they should be left to their fate. But without us, they will never escape their system. One can only hope. But, the probes I sent. You sent probes? Oh, Giltan, you should not have done so, not without consulting me. I didn't want to bother you without more data. They were my personal probes. I built them with my resource allotments. I saw no harm. Kivan sighed. It happened with every new generation. At least one young, impetuous Sophon took it upon themselves to explore rather than satisfy themselves with the provided data streams. He looked at Giltan fondly. It wasn't a bad thing, and usually those individuals went on to be very accomplished members of the community. He couldn't help but feel a little pride that it was his junior associate to be the one to claim the dubious honor of rediscovering the X-32s this time. The emotions of pride and amusement washed over Giltan. The community is well aware of the X-32S, he sent with a little flatulent chuckle flooding the space with a spicy, floral scent. You aren't the first to discover them. With every century, their noise spreads further. Last time, it was a freighter pilot. Before that, it was an astrographer. Before that, it was one of our own. If they have been discovered that often, why have they not been contacted? They are well beyond the point of contact, hazardously so. They need to be inducted for their own sake before it is too late for them. My dear friend and subordinate, Kaivan replied, it was likely too late for them when they were still working stone into simple tools. It is a sad and hard truth that not all Sophants are suitable to join us. But why? It's complicated. Are they dangerous? Very. They are far too dangerous to contact. Are they too violent? Not especially as compared to other pre-contact Sophants. There are certain solutions to the dilemma of scarcity and violence, is one of the most obvious and most common. Your race was much like theirs in that regard, and mine... Oh, we were far worse, still are, in fact, Kivan said, as he raised a stubby pseudopod to stroke a wide, discolored scar stretching nearly the length of his side, a gift from one of his beautiful wife's many suitors, one that he brutally killed. Oh, sorry, he transmitted sheepishly as Giltan shrank back. I leaked a little there. No apology needed, Giltan replied. Customs vary as much as our biologies do. My people are far from blameless in that regard. My father's mother still keeps a pistol in her quarters. She was in one of our last wars. It was a big one. Most Sophants share a similar history. Thank the creator that we were saved from ourselves. I doubt we would have survived another century before perishing at the points of our own fangs. Are they a biohazard? like the Levan. They do have an aggressive microbiome and are riddled with parasites, some of which could be harmful, but not like the Levan. Creators know. Those things are death-walking for the rest of us, and we handle them just fine with the proper protocols. Then why? Why are we abandoning them and their world to almost certainly perish? What my probes saw. Gilton shuddered, unsuccessfully suppressing his horror. It's like something out of the galactic history books. Climate change, widespread pollution, including forever chemicals and microplastics, and the sort of weapons that only a war-torn class six population can create. Do you know they have weaponized fusion? So do we. What? We do have a military, Giltan. It is only prudent. 
Just because we have never encountered another transstellar threat doesn't mean that there won't be one. Our collective histories show what happens to the unprepared. We have fusion weaponry and far, far worse at our disposal should the need arise, along with a small but very well-trained group that maintains readiness should the need arise. We don't want to end up like the Andromedans. The Andromedans? Giltan transmitted in surprise. We have contact with other galaxies? Just Andromeda thus far, Kivan replied. And not physically, of course. That is still just a little beyond us. However, we have detected and even exchanged messages from some races, or used to. It, it is not common knowledge because it is distressing. It is truly unfortunate that their trans-stellar races do not share our values. When Andromeda touches us, we will be fully prepared to touch them back. Consider yourself fortunate that we will not be around when that day comes. However, when that day comes, our galaxy will prevail and endure. Our peace and prosperity gives us the advantage in both numbers and industrial capacity. Kivan couldn't suppress his baser nature's darkness, causing Giltan to pull back his antennae. Again, I apologize, Kivan said. Our race has such foulness bound to our very souls. It is so strong that not all of us are allowed translators. No! Another thing that is not common knowledge, Kivan said, and I would not share it now save for the fact that it is relevant. Such foulness is why X-32 shall be forever untouched and unnamed. But you said they are not violent. For the record, I said they were not especially violent. They are as nasty as the rest of us in that regard, and far nastier in others. What is this nastiness you speak of? In a word, Kivan said, they are horny. They are the most lascivious of any race encountered. It oozes off of them in waves. Worse than the Kareel? Kivan said, I have learned to knock at any closed door around here for fear of what I will witness. Smart move, Kivan laughed. Those things are irrepressible. But their depravity is limited to their own species. The X-32S? Oh, dear creators in the void, they are impossible to deal with. So we have contacted them. Just as with your kind, samples were collected prior to official contact. Let's just say that their madness is overpowering and dangerous. Every being that has tried communicating with their minds has been left worse for it. Even when the X-32s tried to behave, they couldn't help themselves. They call themselves humans, by the way. They, they actually, um, I mean, what? Any biped likely has a crotch, Kivan replied. Any being that nourishes their progeny directly likely has external glands. All of us have orifices. You can't be serious. One of my kind was on one of the assessment teams, Kaivan replied. Apparently, we resemble a tool that their males use to mate with themselves. They, they mate with themselves? Oh, yes. If a partner is not available, their lusts are so strong that they must mitigate them with self-stimulation to completion. Some other races do the same, but it's not something that they advertise, obviously. Does, does your race, no, does yours? Creators, no, it's unthinkable. Imagine having to think it, and you have what dealing with a human is like. My ancestor attacked and killed the human they were interviewing after the human looked at their mouth and imagined, um using it. They say that the human was unrecognizable when they finished with them. Of course, my ancestor was traumatized, both by what the humans transmitted and what they did as a result. They murdered an innocent pre-contact being who was not actually intending on doing anything amiss. Kivan clenched his mouth into a tight vertical slit. It was horrible. After they killed the human, they couldn't reconcile what they did and returned to our homeworld, where they engaged in duel after duel until they fell, as is our way. Giltan shuddered in horror, drawing his antennae close. And then there was poor Captain Vexel. He was the freighter pilot who took an ill-advised shortcut through their system against regulations. He discovered them, and while scanning the humans from his ship, planning to make a full report to us, he found that the human was suffering from a common ailment among developed races, uncontrolled cell replication. For us, this is not a major issue. Even a ship's medical bay can fix it. Vexel couldn't bear to let a fellow being suffer and die, so he, against all reason, took the human aboard to extract the tumors. 
Unfortunately, the tumors were in the human's digestive tract near the exit. Kavan took a moment to tightly control his thoughts. Vexel successfully was able to use a standard medical endoscope to eliminate the tumors, but it required inserting it. Poor human, it must have been terrifying. Terror wasn't the feeling the human was consumed with, Kivan replied. You can't be serious. And they blasted poor Vexel with their feelings. In essence, Vexel inadvertently engaged in an act that humans do to each other for pleasure, even though the appropriate orifice is immediately adjacent. Vexel still lives, but in seclusion. They say he is doing much better. And the human? Vexel released it after saving its life. It spoke of its experiences, but the humans don't believe it to be true, though Vexel's species is now widely used by the humans as a fictional depiction of transstellar life. Oh, creators, Gilten gasped. But without aid, the humans will perish and take their current biosphere along with them. Tragic, but unavoidable. Based on our projections, there isn't a single species that a human won't find desirable in some way, even if most won't, enough will. The galactic community decided long ago that humans cannot be allowed into our fold, even if this means extinction, even if it means mass extinction. Gilvan sagged and let out a soulful chirping, their version of weeping as waves of inconsolable grief ravaged the area. Giltan? Kivan asked, as he tried desperately to send soothing thoughts to his distressed fellow Sofont. Sorry, sorry, Gilvan said as he struggled to restrain his emotions. It's just that humans aren't the only sapient race on that world. They condemn another to share their fate. What? Kivan emoted, his shock drowning Gilvan's grief. My probes detected advanced brainwaves, indicative of sapience, among another species on that world. Those poor innocents will die along with the humans. It's, it's too much. I, I, I can't. We didn't know this, Kaivan mentally cried. This changes everything. Tell me of them. There is an aquatic being, Gilvan replied, sending a visual image of a bottle-nosed dolphin. And they are sapient? Without a doubt. They are class zero, but they are unquestionably sapient. This changes everything, Kivan exclaimed, quivering with excitement. Oh, we are having that meeting. We must get samples of these beings and initiate contact immediately. While these humans may be foul beyond description, we must save these other sofonts. Kivan showered his beloved junior with praise and undiluted pride. You have done very well. This is the discovery of our generation. Do you, do you think I could be the one to reach out to them? My dear friend and associate, Kivan beamed, we both will. I can't wait to find out what wonderful things these gentle, innocent beings will bring to our community.